right everybody, so we have got to what many might think of, me included, the exciting bit and that's where we're going to fit this onto this. This is obviously our collapsible wind turbine blades because we're making a foldable wind turbine that we made in a previous video. But I have made a modification to this head here and what I've done is on the reverse side I've mirrored the gears. So this sun gear now fits in there and of course that becomes the drive. We can't put it straight in there because we need to put it onto here and if we just put it straight on there the whole thing would come out. So there's a cap that goes on there to hold everything in and of course that cap needs to be oops on first. So that cap goes there, that goes in there and that's how we connect all of this stuff and then we stack up our three gear system so that we can then slide it into the gearbox housing. I have of course prepared these in Tinkercad. So if anybody wants those STL files the link is in the description. They're freely available to anybody and any improvements or changes you want to make to it please feel free. Now what we're really going to do is connect all these together in that stack of three that we did before. So it makes a stack of three like that. That section goes on here, the whole thing slides in there, and that cap will be in between to fit onto there. So we're going to put that together. <laughs> there it is fitted together, we've got a bolt sticking out there, so we've got a pretty nose cone, again it's in the Tinkercad files, and that just press fits onto there. Okay. And then they're free to flap up and down and now we can slot the entire gearbox back into the wind generator section. And when we've done that, there you go, one folding wind turbine. That's pretty wicked actually. So it folds up really nicely, that's a part of, the part of it. It's a bit heavier than the other one that we were looking for, we've got about two kilos here now. But I've left a foot on it right there. That foot plate obviously is going to take a pole or whatever you want to fix it. You'll have to make a fixing so the foot plate can fit to whatever it is you want to fix it to. And then of course this back piece for a folding for an actual wind turbine, we need to put a pole coming out of the back here with the fin on it so that it's wind direction. But that is the wind turbine, the folding wind turbine pretty much finished. Now there is one other issue with this that I want to discuss with you and that is the blades. The blades obviously fold out. They're going to uh, collapse back in unless we do something right here. And that I have been pondering long and hard. And the solution I've come up with is clips. You just put a couple of clips on there. They snap into place and they hold it out. So they hold the wind turbine blade out. I think a better solution is required. Something like maybe a retaining pin or some other way. But I'm going to use these clips to hold it out because it's expedient and quick and that's what I want to do because I want to get this thing tested. Notice a collection of parts? Well that's because we've got a good news, bad news situation. Good news first is it worked! Contrary to some people's belief, it turned in the wind and the wind speed was 4.5 meters per second. It actually began at about 4 meters per second and that was when it began to turn and got up to 4.55 meters per second. It was turning beautifully as you saw. So it does have a, quite a high torque for initial start. Once it gets going though, it gets going which is really kind of cool and we did get some measurements out of it we're getting around about 100 volts at around about 90 100 milliamps and so about 9 watts or so with a wind speed of about 4.5 and a blade length of 54 which is what this is then about 10 watts is what you could expect so it didn't only work it worked really well. It worked well in comparison to what you could buy. And of course, what you can buy is $400 and I want to spend more than $40 on this. So that's the other bit of good news is it's possible to make these things much, much more cheaply and still have them perform really well. Okay, 
that's the good news. Now the bad news. While I was going to do some testing and showing, it suddenly sort of went really, really quiet and span like crazy. And so I thought, hmm, that's not right. Took it apart and discovered this. What this is, is where one of the planet gears has sheared. If I take the planets off, you'll see the ring carrier. It's sheared off right there against the sun. And this is the top gear which took all the stresses and all the torque. Because when I printed this, I printed it that way. And the grain is in that direction and I did 20% fill. It was not up to the job, eh? It just sheared straight off and that was so disappointing. Now there's loads of ways I could fix that, of course. One is 100% fill. Two is uh, do something about the grain direction. What I'm likely to do is replace the plastic pins with these things. These are stainless steel pins. They're 25 millimeters by six millimeters and you buy them for holding up shelves. They're about five pounds for a dozen, something like that. So I'm gonna reprint the planet carriers and put these in and I'll probably take that off opportunity to put some bearings in here which will make the whole thing very much quieter and we won't have as much loss per stage that we're getting at the moment. That is the improvement I'm going to make on it but the essential core, the essential takeaway here is this design works really really well and I'm really quite pleased. The choice of materials wasn't up to the stresses at the top end here so I'm going to replace all of those but hey Life's a journey, isn't it? Not a destination. So I thought I would share that with you. So it's a little equivocal. One thing is it works really, really well. The other thing is it needs a little bit more improvement in the strength of materials when it comes to the planet carrier. And that is a little bit of a shame. Now, I'm obviously a huge fan of VAWTs. So the next iteration of this is likely to be in a VAWT arrangement. But remember, the principles here are all the same. I mean, we have our generator section, which is this section here. Now, generator section, remember, is a serpentine coil, and that's strikingly good. Then we have our gearbox. Our gearbox is doing a great job for capturing the motion and turning it into what that generator needs. And then we have our capture, which is this top bit here, which we've used a HAWT arrangement. If you use a VAWT arrangement, then the logic, the principles don't change. We use a water wheel, it's exactly the same principles. Instead of putting these blades on here and attaching it to our gear set, you just put a water wheel on there. So all the principles are the same, and we've shown that those principles work really, really well. I'm kind of pleased with it, in fact, I'm super pleased with how it actually worked. And a little bit annoyed that the pin sheared off. But, as I say, we'll be replacing those and we'll be revisiting this. I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> A lot of fun for you. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.